Victoria, Lambert, Lam Vegas, LV, however you see fit. Located next to the Bronx Zoo, Lambert is one of the more prestigious housing developments in the Bronx. I heard of Lambert. I've been there actually. They got like some pro they got some like apartments where they on top of each other, like I guess your living room will be at the bottom and the bedrooms will be up top. Like it's fire, like they got steps in the apartments. Like it's fire is different, you feel me? But I wouldn't live there. <laughs> Let's get that straight. But it's fire though. I had like a friend I lived there. Kind of like Parkchester. Some of the units in Lambert also have an upstairs. If you are not familiar with the layout, the building might give maze vibes, with its yeah. many staircases and hallways. The development lies along the strip of East 180th Street, 180 or the 80. Other notable blocks along 80, heading toward the west side, would be Daly Avenue, Vice, Money Well, and 800. After that, you have Prospect, Clinton, Belmont, Hughes, Arthur, Monterey, or Rayway, Bathgate, Wash, then Webster. All of these hoods are along the 8 with surrounding hoods, supporting the causes of which they are in close proximity to. As for Lamb Vegas, they have had a few chief rivals. As far back as the early 2000s they have had an up and down relationship with 800. It was mostly fighting, there were some more lethal incidents, but some of the people from each had family in the other. That's the dynamics. However, the beef with those two hoods were with particular individuals, as some, like basketball players, enjoyed relationships with each other, and often battled off in the tournaments. Sometime, those tournaments were interrupted by fighting. But in 2017, Mo Hall from Lambert was killed, and we will talk a little bit- Yo, like, it always starts with something so simple. You could be playing basketball, playing any sport. And then it gets, like, as you grow up, it starts getting, like, out of hand due to neighborhood problems and stuff like that. Now you can't go to certain neighborhoods and do what you want to do. And you were just a baller, you feel me? But because you're from over here or over there and other situations happen now that, that don't even got nothing to do with you. But since you're from the area or a certain area, now you can't go play basketball over there because something may happen. You can do whatever you want. But something may happen, like, I ain't gonna lie, that's, that's the city. More about that in an upcoming video. Yeah, how you see me, man? Joshua Horn is seen me, man. All my niggas is home. Free the rest of my niggas. Today, Lambert and 800 are said to be a part of the 8 Olin Cup, along with Money Well. The Hoods are alleged to have blood gang members, the Hounds, Max, and Brims, with Money Well and Lambert containing blazers. Lambert used to be 1090, but that has been dead since about around 2011. Lambert's true ops are JG. These are the guys from Jackson Avenue. From what we know, they were Mac Bowler as well, and used to be YG. They went by Jackson Avenue Gunners. In addition to beefing with Jackson, they also beef with Seth's side. Let's talk about a few fallen members of Lamb Vegas. First up, Ty Cash. I heard of him. When I was like in high school, like a long, long time ago. He was like a, like, I don't know if he used to dance, get light. I don't know what he used to do. But I think he was like cool with too many different hoods. Like, and I got him caught up. Like, I think he was hood hopping or something like that. I don't really know. Feel me? But it was something like that. Like, he was too cool with people or something like that. Feel me? Or, that's what I think. Let me know if I'm wrong in the comment section. June 14th, 2009. Investigators worked to determine whether a slain Harlem 15-year-old, whose relatives were struggling to make sense of his sudden death, was his killer's intended target. Ty Cash, a freshman at Walton High School, spent the last moments of his short life on a Sunday evening playing basketball at West 129th Street and St. Nicholas Avenue, his relatives said. He was young. He just started high school, said his grief-stricken uncle. He was a real fun kid. Though investigators initially thought Ty Cash might have been caught in a crossfire, they later suspected that he and another uncle got into a fight with another man at the courts, police sources said. That man then pulled a gun and started firing wildly, and one bullet hit Ty Cash in the chest, what? police That's said. He died a short time later at St. Luke's what? Roosevelt Hospital. The dead teen's friends and relatives, many of whom insisted Tyvon was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time, were shocked that his life came to such a tragic end. He was a good kid, he didn't start no trouble with nobody, said a friend. He was just a little fly kid. This wasn't supposed to happen to him. 
Dozens of Harlem residents gathered that Monday night to rally against gun violence and mourn Thai cash. Thai is claimed by both Grand Projects in Harlem and in Lambert in the Bronx. He got a lot of love for a 15-year-old. You could catch him riding his bike with a fitted cap in the summer. He was one of the Lambert guys that could go to 800 at any time because he had family there and was not involved in the beef. He was a member of the YGs and word on the street, the shooter was from Skrilla Hill, a neighborhood in Harlem close to where he was killed. As for Lambert, Ty Cash is still memorialized till this day, and is basically the first fallen member from the guys in his generation. This would affect many of the people in the area, those in 802. Among those people, would be a Lambertian named, Lou. When he was young, Lou participated in the basketball tournaments held in Daly Park. Sadly, not too long after Ty Cash was killed, Lou would suffer a similar fate. In the hours after Christmas of 2010, 17-year-old Lou was gunned down moments after he and a group of people got off a Manhattan-bound 2 train at the West Farm Square East Tremont Avenue stop. It was about 1.24 a.m., police said. Lou, who had two prior arrests for robbery, died at St. Barnabas Hospital. Police officials did not reveal a possible motive for- Nah, what? That's creepy. What's that? Yo. I heard, I heard, I heard of Lou too. It was like Ty and Lou. You feel me? You need to say it together. You feel me? I think. You feel me? I don't know. This is man long ago. This is probably like almost 15 years ago. Like, nah. It's crazy. Like, who, who the storyteller? Like, and how he know all this stuff? The killing, which left Straffinger's jittery. It's scary, said a regular two train rider. You can't go anywhere normally anymore. You have to walk with fear. A 57-year-old construction worker said this. Gunplay is nothing new in the area. You have these boys who are all strapped, and when they have a confrontation the guns go off, he said. Now a kid's dead for no good reason. It's horrible. At least 14 people who exited the train with Lou or were on the platform when he was killed were questioned by police, cops said, but no one was charged in connection with the crime. Till this day, we don't think anyone was ever apprehended for his murder. Allegedly though, word on the street, Jackson Crazy. Avenue was responsible for the shooting. The next person we will talk about is Blana. This is more of a recent situation, or at least it per- I heard this one too, she's another basketball player from like West Farms. What's up with these basketball players from West Farms? What's going on? Like, nah, like, don't tell me this is all over basketball or something like this. Like, let me hear her story. Tames to the guys around the age of these Bronx drill rappers. It all went down one night in 2017. This is heartbreaking to watch. Here's what happened. The one borough where murders are up this year over last, the Bronx. A killer is on the run tonight and a community is coming together through heartbreak. Police are searching for whoever shot a 17-year-old girl after a fight broke out last night in the Bronx. CBS 2's Rena Roy is live in the West Farm section with more on the investigation. Rena. Well, Jessica, dozens of family and friends are gathered here tonight across the street right behind us to remember the life of 17-year-old Vlada Robert after it was cut short last night. Police say that she showed up to St. Barnabas Hospital with a gunshot wound in her torso area just before 11 p.m. They say she was transported there after getting shot on Vice Avenue in front of an apartment building just a few blocks from her home. Investigators say right now it is unclear if she was the intended target. Detectives are still working to figure out a motive. A community gathers to mourn tonight after street violence steals another child and leaves another family devastated. There were tears and heartache at the Lambert houses in the Bronx tonight as a community came out to mourn a young teenage girl who will never get to enjoy the summer of her youth. 17-year-old Milana Roberts was fatally shot late Saturday night, just a few blocks from her home. Police say a fight broke out on the street. A gun was drawn. The young girl was shot once in the back. They didn't wait for an ambulance. Roberts was raised to the hospital where she was pronounced dead. Outside her home today on East 180th Street and Boston Road, there were balloons and candles 
and more sorrow than any family should have to carry. Relatives declined to comment. One guidance mm. counselor at Valana's school posted on Facebook, quote, we mourn her passing, but we will rejoice in all the wonderful memories that she shared with us during her short life. Once the sun set, many of the balloons were released into the night sky. So far, no arrest in this tragic shooting. In the Bronx, Lucy Yang. Tonight, we're hearing for the first time from the brother of a 17-year-old girl gunned down in June in the Bronx. A case of random violence, and the animal who did this is still on the loose. As an older brother, I didn't do enough to protect both of my sisters. I protected one, but the other one isn't here. What would you say to her if she could hear you right now? I would say I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't do enough to protect you. I'm sorry you're not here. It is a guilt he doesn't deserve to have to live with. It is a pain that eats away at him. 23-year-old Kirk Stinson hey. watched his youngest sister get gunned down and then vanish from his life. They were just dancing, listening to music, all of that. And it was just like, we just heard shots about like five or six shots. Exactly two months ago to the day, that's when Stinson lost his best friend, an innocent bystander, police say, 17-year-old Valana Roberts, shot in the back. And as I look up the hill to see, like, if I could see him, one thing I see is a hoodie, mm -hmm. and he's taken off. I turn back around, my sister's on the floor. This is the suspect cops have been looking for, believed to be a teenage boy who opened fire into a crowd of people at Vice Avenue and East 181st Street. Video Stinson says he watches every day. Just to hope somebody would come forward and say they know who this is so my family won't grieve. My family has been grieving. It's like my neighborhood is a good place. It's a good place. And it's just like ever since this happened, it's just a dark cloud. Nobody wants to play basketball. Nobody wants to go have water balloon fights. Stinson says his yeah. father has cancer. His mother has heart failure. He is a hemophiliac. So Valana wanted to become a nurse. And even in her final moments, she wanted her brother not to worry. I'm gonna be okay was the last words that came out of my sister's mouth. I gotta call my father's phone sometimes to hear his voicemail because on his voicemail is her voice. So yeah, investigators were working diligently to find Valana's killer and also to bring the family some solace. They would soon apprehend the alleged killer. Anyone with ten thousand dollars or more yo, in credit card debt or personal loan? That's insane. So, uh, yo, RP to her and the family. The family, my condolences. My condolences to the family. That is ridiculous, bro. The family of Lana Rock might be getting the justice they've been seeking. A young man accused of killing the 17-year-old is now in police custody here in the Bronx. News 12 The Bronx reporter Eric Stelzer is at the 48th precinct with the latest. Amanda, Valana Roberts died after getting shot in the torso. Her suspected killer caught just more than three months later. Anything you want to say about what happened? What's going through your head right now? Do you feel bad about going to the It was him? This is exclusive video heck? of that man who police say killed Valana Roberts in early June. You're looking at 16-year-old Julius Romero escorted by police officers at the 4-8 precinct. The 17-year-old's family says Roberts was a talented basketball player. She went to Truman High School, and friends and family tell us her personality can light up any room. The victim's brother telling News 12 he was with Valana the night that she died, and earlier in this investigation, telling us at least one person was taken in for questioning and then later released. Now this man will stand before a judge as this case involving the murder of Lana Roberts makes its way through the courtroom. And that suspect, Julius Romero, just 16 years old, he was extradited here to the Bronx from Florida. A Bronx teen accused of a serious crime stood before a judge today. 16-year-old Julius facing charges for the fatal shooting of a high school student. News while the Bronx reporter Carmen Grant spoke to the victim's family outside the Bronx Hall of Justice. The one is justice. Mark my words, that's what we would get. A big brother's promise to his little sister, Valana Roberts. I just feel like he robbed me and my family. That's about it. And I want him to get the maximum sentence. Today, the baby-faced defendant stood before a judge to face charges in the fatal June shooting. News 12's request to film the hearing was denied by a Bronx judge because of Romero's young age. She didn't know him. We didn't know him. That was my first time seeing his face. What? So... So he randomly did that. It's insane. So he just randomly did that. Nah, something's wrong with that kid. Something's wrong with that. 
I'm real emotional right now. I'm trying to hold it together. Roberts had just turned 17 when she was killed. Her family says she was looking forward to her senior year playing basketball. As you can see, this was a heavy loss for Lambert. Over on Ray Way, rapper Doug E.B. would also feel this loss, as he was very close to Vlana. It is said that sometime after Doug E. B.'s father passed away, Vlana's family allowed him to live with them. He has a tattoo on his arm dedicated to her. Since then, Ray Way and Lambert has fallen out, but Doug E. B. still honors Vlana though. As for the alleged killer, word on the street is that this kid was from Jackson Avenue. Lastly, we have Mexi. He has been dissed numerous times by DOA members, including TG and his brother Kenzo Bowler, as well as K. Flock. In early February of 2021, a 28-year-old was shot dead during a clash with three men in the Bronx. It was a late Sunday night. Christian Jalibert, aka Mexi, was gunned down at the corner of Vice Avenue and East 181st Street in West Farms, just after 9 p.m., authorities said. He was arguing with three men, one of whom opened fire. Responding officers found him lying on the pavement with three gunshot wounds to his torso. He was rushed to St. Barnabas Hospital, where he was pronounced dead about 30 minutes later. Cops were looking for three men who took off in a gray sedan, heading west on Bronx Park South. The nature of the dispute was not immediately clear. The streets talk, and there are different assumptions as to what happened. Of course people are going to say oh, that was Jackson Avenue guys, while some say it was guys from DOA. Others say that Mexi's death was due to a drug deal gone awry, as he was known to sell marijuana, allegedly. Word on the street, someone was arrested for this Damn, situation, yo. but we cannot confirm. Oh, that was crazy. I, yo, that's tight.